Welcome to the IREL Podcast. Are you sick and tired of real estate gurus pitching their next free construction deal only to find out years later they were completely wrong? Worried the next overseas conference you spend thousands to attend will only be used to sell overpriced lots and deserted developments? Join thousands of other international real estate seekers who are looking for their place in paradise without the sales pitch. Straight from your host, Taylor White. Hey, podcast listener. Welcome to the Overseas Property Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor White. I am proud to say this episode is brought to your earbuds, courtesy of my friends at Trusted House Sitters. How else could you live around the world for just $7.49 per month? Wait, did I even mention daily email alerts of open homes, access to members 24 hours a day, and the ability to apply for as many house sitting jobs as you wish? If you're interested in being a house and pet sitter at one of the thousands of open spots around the world, head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash trusted for more details. In what will surely be one of our most talked about and popular episodes ever, I'm more than excited to sit down and speak with Nat and Jody from House Sitting World and coming to your earbuds from a house sitting assignment in the beautiful state of Colorado. Nat and Jody have been featured everywhere, including Fox News, ABC, NBC, CBS, and are breaking down the specific strategies and tactics that have taken them all over the world being house and pet sitters for 18 consecutive months. Nat, Jody, and I will talk about what exactly house and pet sitting is and why it's revolutionizing worldwide travel. The top three platforms they are recommending, with one having been on this podcast, reveals what the biggest misconceptions are in house sitting today and much more. Instead of telling you more, let's join Nat and Jody from House Sitting World Headquarters. Nat and Jody, what's going on? It's Taylor White. I'm excited to have you on the podcast straight from House Sitting World Headquarters. So we can get to know you personally. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Hey, Taylor. It's <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you. Hi, Taylor. This is awesome. <laughs> Well, we've been house sitting now full time since uh, March 2013. So we've been going about 16 months now. And I know that you ladies have been featured all over the place, just to name a few Fox News, ABC, NBC, CBS. You have some great websites, international house sitting, house sitting world, all kinds of great things. Talk to us more about your company and philosophy. Well, really, it, it all just stemmed for us from doing something that we loved. We didn't even realize we loved it. Like when we actually took on our first house sitting job uh, or assignment as it's called, we were literally just trying to get over a bit of a, you know, bad experience that we'd had living in Dubai for 16 months. And we thought, well, we thought, well, what a great way to actually, you know, not have to pay any rent and we can get ourselves back on our feet. Uh, but as it turned out, each house sit just kept lining up, everything, everything kept lining up and we started seeing different ways of traveling the world. And it was like, wow, this is really what we've been seeking all this time. Like this idea of chasing, you know, some kind of materialistic success or wealth wasn't actually our truth. So getting on board the, the international house sitting bandwagon actually became our, our philosophy of life. It was like doing what we loved and inspiring others to do it and not fall into the trap of all the different excuses of I have no money or I have no time or anything like that. It's like just follow your heart. I mean, we stumbled upon this due to a, a pretty horrific experience, uh, a particularly a financial and emotionally devastating experience, but it was the greatest gift of all. Now, we don't believe everybody has to go through that. It's literally just really step into your truth and say, what would I love to be doing? If you'd love to be traveling the world, then what we do at House Sitting World is give you some tips and tools on how to do it with some extra, I don't know, like fun and different and different ways of living like a local and, and having some pure enjoyment of, of hanging out with pets and, I don't know, getting to experience things you wouldn't normally, to, normally experience if you were just staying in a hotel or a resort. 
Well, I'm all about fun, and I absolutely love this concept. Take us back to the beginning or the start. Exactly what is house and pet sitting? House and pet sitting is where a house sitter comes into a person's home and looks after their home and pets, um, provides security and care for the pets if they have them. They don't always have them, but usually, while the house homeowner goes elsewhere. So they might go house sitting themselves or they have to return home if they're an expat. Um, we find a lot of our house sits are actually for expats, so they have to return home oftentimes for medical things or family, business. And so we come in and actually just mind their house, literally, <laughs> take over the running of the house. So I'm curious, as I see house sitting, pet sitting kind of used together, is there a difference or is that the same thing? Well, with, with pet sitting, particularly in the United States, pet sitting is a very viable business for a lot of people. It, it is actually their livelihood. So pet sitting in a local area can involve uh, just actually walking the dogs or, or minding them for a day, occasionally overnight as well. Whereas the concept of, of house sitting and bringing the pet sitting element into it, and as Nat said, we've, we've got a lot of expats now um, as clients in all different parts of the world and the expats are definitely trying to find the right way to say this but certainly more open-minded at the idea of having fellow travelers or people coming into their home they've got sort of more trust and 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 pure just openness about them uh, to be able to look after their home look after their pets security etc and the idea of having to pay for a pet sitter is you know it can be really expensive and you really just don't have to do it when there's so many willing and able and passionate people all around the world that actually do want to do this absolutely for free just like we do so Nat and Jody, on the show, I've had Andy Peck from Trusted House Sitters, and I'm on your site now. I know that you guys work with them as well, but can you talk to us more about the different house sitting platforms that are available and exactly how they work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we're with Trusted House Sitters, and that's just a personal choice. They are the largest, so as full-time house sitters, obviously, we have to have as much variety as we can in the assignments that are available to us because we have to try and do back-to-back -back house sits where we can. So we don't have to pay for accommodation in between. So they've been great for us, uh, trusted house sitters. So, as I said, they're one of them. But uh, mind my house and house carers. House carers are the other two international platforms. So you'll find that there's a couple of uh, main international platforms, and then there's also the regional ones. So there's House Sitters America, and there's Aussie House Sitters. Uh, so they do specialise in different countries as well. So it really depends on what somebody's looking for if they want an international flavor to their house sitting like we do or you want to just focus in your own country perhaps if you're an American uh, citizen and you just wanted to stay in America there's certainly options to do that as well. One thing about um, Andy and Rachel's platform that Trusted House Sitters is, is they really have looked at everybody else's platforms and, and tried to have the best user experience and uh, having had previous experience with some of the other ones that that was literally what sold us on on that particular platform and they're doing so much amazing work all around the world with their publicity and marketing it just means that there's more and more homeowners from different countries I mean we're seeing some crazy countries coming up now you know we've had Japan and and uh, South Africa and Botswana and it's just it, it's amazing the world is really opening up thanks to this particular platform at, at you know at the beginning and then just as a follow-up, can you kind of better talk about how the platforms actually work? So I know that we have people that are looking for house-sitting assignments worldwide, and then we have homeowners who post jobs. But can you better explain exactly how they work? Yeah, sure. We, we like to, um, I guess, um, make it similar to a dating site. It's probably the easiast way to actually explain <laughs> it. House dating, I like House that. dating. Yeah, <laughs> Matchmaking. Matchmaking, yeah. sir. <laughs> They're all very popular these days. Um, yeah, so that basically a homeowner will put up their assignment, so they'll have the details of the, the actual assignment, the dates and what's needed to be looked after, what pets and, and what's required in the home. And then a house sitter will actually have their profile up, so they'll have perhaps a video, some photos, a description of you know, their previous experience, uh, some references and that sort of stuff. So when a homeowner actually puts up an assignment, it's up to the house sitter then to actually apply for that. So, you know, they have to consider things like the dates and the climate and the location and how they're going to get there and those different things to look at. So if it actually suits a house sitter, they will apply for it. And that sends an email through to the homeowner to say, yep, I'm available and, you know, this is a small little blurb about me. Then go to my uh, profile and have a look more at, at what I do. 
And I've got to add a little tip in on that as well. Yeah, don't, please. Don't wait until you've worked out the location and the yeah. climate and the everything. Do that research after making the application because what's happening now is that there's we, – we personally want to keep the balance between homeowner assignments being listed and the amount of house sitters wanting to house it. So what's happening for a homeowner, particularly if they've got, you know, a really sought-after destination, is they're getting – 30, 40, 50, sometimes even 100 applicants. So you don't really have a lot of time to sit there and do your research and say, oh, yeah, uh, you know, I want to go and visit Bali, so I might apply for that house sit. You won't get a look in. So our our kind of, I guess, mode of action is um, get the application in, then go and look, and if for any reason it doesn't suit, then pull your application back out. But in more more cases than not, the homeowner that... that has all these applications, has to start going through and, and looking at, you know, who they're wanting to, to have come to their home or who at least they're wanting to interview in the first case scenario. So, yeah, definitely get your application in first and then go from there. So if you don't mind, I want to kind of focus on some of your own personal strategies and tactics. Mm. How do you choose your own personal house sitting assignments And then one thing that comes to mind when I think about this is that they kind of all might be spaced out all in different countries throughout the world, maybe at different times. So are you able to get these back to back or are they spaced out? Well, funnily enough, we don't use logic. (laughs) Being two women, we use only intuition. (laughs) And while that might sound a little bit magical and woo-woo and stuff like that, it, it really has served us. We really feel into... An assignment, when the assignment is posted, we have a look at it and we look at the photos and we feel into whether we can see ourselves there. And that has really served us so well. Even if we don't know where the country is. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) know about Costa Rica or uh, half the the sites that we've been to. But um, no, we really just felt into it. And it's um, if it feels right, we apply for it. And so far, amazingly, we've had back-to-back house sits the entire time that we've been house sitting since. What? Well, I'll give you some stats here. In 16 months of completely living out of one 50-pound suitcase, which didn't start that way, that's another story, but um, <laughs> uh, in travelling the world through, you know, four continents and, and eight different countries and 12 or 13 house sits now, uh, we have actually only paid for 15 nights accommodation in 16 months. Now, for most people, they take a vacation for maybe two weeks a year and pay for accommodation out of that. Well, our two weeks our two weeks vacation has been paying for accommodation as well because we've had completely rent-free living for 16 months straight. That's incredible. Mm. It is, really. When you look at it, the dates matching up, they are ridiculously incredible <laughs> how they have. Um, but I do feel it's just been because we've actually felt into what as Jody was saying before, what feels true for us. So if it feels true to go to a particular country and apply for that house sit, then we do it. Regardless of how we're going to get there or what we might have before that, we might have a gap of a month or two before that that's not filled in and we're not quite sure what's going to happen, then suddenly that gets filled and that's exactly what's happened all along the way is all the gaps have got filled up precisely. Well, one, one perfect example was we were sitting in southwest France. We were on a four-month assignment there and midway through a, a position in Costa Rica came up and it was like oh wow like you know I'd love to go to Central Sounds America <laughs> let's go you know, we, we do want to check out Panama at some stage as well so we applied and it meant that there was going to be a gap of about two months from southwest France to getting to Costa Rica now that got filled up with um, a trip back to London which worked out perfectly because that's a great pivotal point to fly out of but then there was this one month gap that came in Again, just perfectly. Uh, it was a good two months afterwards and Canada came up, b and in Canada for one month, exact dates. So we flew from, uh, we caught a bus from, from France to, to London, flight from London to Vancouver, flight from Vancouver via Mexico City to uh, San Jose and Costa Rica. All back to back, no accommodation paid for. So that was 10 months straight of, of no paid accommodation. Wow, you ladies are awesome. (laughs) Okay, Nat and Jody, no doubt a lot of people listening to this now, including myself, are like, wow, this is awesome. I really want to get involved. So what are some of the most important things to consider when first getting involved in house sitting? You know, one of our first tips for people is to actually look on the house sitting platforms and really start to use your imagination about where it can take you. 
because I think a lot of logic starts to come in. A lot of people don't believe it's true, that it's possible, that they can do it. But really, seriously looking on the platforms and seeing what's available, it really opens your eyes to what you can, where you can go and what, and what assignments you can take. It's like, wow, this is amazing. So that's certainly the first thing we really suggest to people is to let that imagination run wild and see where you would love to go, where you've always wanted to go. And I would also recommend really doing a check-in because if you're somebody who is a, a traveller, like an experiencing, seeking traveller that is there to do the, you know, the, the local sites and the different adventures that are on offer, then really tap in and say, okay, if I'm going to apply for a house sit in a fantastic location and there are pets, am I going to be able to, you know, do that? Am I going to be able to hold that responsibility? Um, a couple of things to remember is that dogs take a lot more time and a, a lot more energy. They're heaps of fun, particularly if you're anywhere near a beach or a park or the woods and you can walk them and throw the balls and, you know, it's great exercise for you and it's great for the dogs and they're such, they have such good, well, they are such good company. But if you've got cats, uh, like we had in London for a couple of months, they're easy. You know, you can really spend the day out <laughs> and go and sightsee and, you know, take trips up to Oxford from London for the day and, and things like that. But but check in, really do that truth check in first because it may not be for you. You know, we, we've got a lot of friends who are full-time digital nomads and, and travellers and while they might just want to do a house hit here or there, particularly if they've got a lot of work to do, they're happy to sort of be at home a lot more. But in between, they want to go explore and traveling so maybe full-time house sitting is not for you maybe just incorporate it into your your you know nomadic lifestyle so you ladies have been doing this for about a year and a half and are no doubt insiders or experts on this so i really want to pick your brain and something that comes to mind to me right now is what is first do you base it on the jobs that you get as far as the house sitting sites or is it based on places that you want to go to a little bit of both. Yeah. It's sort of when Nat was saying about looking through the house sitting platforms to see what's there to kick your imagination in. That's that's exactly how we started right. and how we continue to go. So we'll literally just see something coming up. And what we do is is even with our Facebook community, which now has over 600 people in there, I'll have a look on the Trusted House Sitters platform, occasionally the others. And if something really cool shows up, I'll share it in there because it's inspiring for others to see uh, that, you know, you can have six weeks in, in Botswana if, if that was what you want to experience. So that imagination element is definitely first. But it, it's such a weird feeling for us because we will see something come up. We know what our calendar is. And I'll tell you this, Taylor, I have never had 12 months in advance booked in my life. <laughs> and we are booked right up until this time next year with our house sets. Wow. Um, I've never experienced life beyond this weekend <laughs> before. So this is, a, <laughs> this is a really new experience for me as well. But we know when our availability is and as we're building up to that um, or as anybody's building up to that. So just look and, and just get that first one rolling. And if you really trust, they will just keep rolling in. The, the key thing is getting that first assignment. So there's a lot of people in our group who make the suggestion that, you know, Keep scanning the sites and then if you see one that you like, then sign up and, you know, submit your application. I'll tell you right now that you will miss out if you wait. If you're keen on this, sign up for one or more platforms right away and get your profile done because if you see an assignment that you really want to take on and you haven't got your profile in place, um, you haven't got your membership set up as yet, then you're literally going to miss that great assignment. So we highly recommend getting on the platforms now. Even if you're only going to do one house sit a year, it pays for itself straight away. And I think it's about setting that intention too, that if you really do feel that you want to go on house sit, then by setting up your profile and having your membership with the platform as well, really does set that intention that that's what you're going to go and do. And so the, the uh, house sit assignments do turn up, the ones that you really want to go and do. So that was another one. Another tip that I wanted to mention too was if the dates don't actually suit you, for a particular house sit, you can always write to the owner and say, those particular dates don't suit me, but I am available for next time you go away as well. So if there's something that you really, really want to go and do, like Botswana was one that was really of interest to us, but at the moment we can't do it. We are booked up for the next year, so it was in a couple of months' time. But we could easily write to them and say, look, keep us on the books, keep us in mind. You know, we're definitely very interested, but we just can't do it right now. So that sounds like you guys contact the owners via the site. So is it via email? 
Yes. Yeah, well, it's, it actually goes through the site. So like that matchmaking right. type of date, dating site type of thing, um, it's all secure. And Trusted House Sitters is one platform that actually charges the homeowners to list as well. Uh, so there's an added security aspect that they really take note of there. Um, it's not about, you know, opening the book so that, you know, people can kind of spam and do all this kind of contacting right. and what have you. Um, it is it is very looked after. I mean, it is definitely you know, about integrity and, mm. and honesty and, you know, keeping the platform safe. So if there's a lot of people looking for house-sitting jobs, what are some tips or tactics that you might want to share that when they contact the owners, the owners will answer their contact? <laughs> I've got a couple, actually. <laughs> I've got some funny ones. Um, I, one lady in our group suggested, uh, which has really worked for her, is to, when you actually do the reply email, is actually start, I don't know, get, guess visualizing almost or having the homeowner visualize you in their home. So she would say, you know, I can really see, like if there was a photo of a, a garden in the uh, profile, in the assignment, she would say, I could really see myself uh, sitting in that garden playing with your cats. And so you're really starting that visualization process for the homeowner going, wow, I can actually see you there as well. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> so it's a little bit of uh, maybe NLP and psychology, but uh, it was really working for her. And one of the other ladies the other day was actually saying that she replied actually on behalf of the pets. So she actually actually wrote to the pets. So rather than the homeowner, because the lady had actually put up the pet's name, she wrote directly to the pets and said, I'm really looking forward to walking you and we're going to have some so much fun down the park and I'm really going to groom you and, and do all these things. You know, I can't, really can't wait to meet you and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and, and my partner's not bad at playing fetch either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really funny, but that worked. The, the homeowner responded and she was thrilled. She said, yep, let's let's hook it up and uh, let's have an interview. So even before the, well, I mean, the, the actual application email or the, the application that you're doing, and you've got to think of it a bit like a, you know, a job application. It's sort of how can you sell yourself? So bringing some of these these elements um, of marketing psychology and, and sales and stuff is, is really valuable if you do have that. So... Applying is one thing, but when somebody does take notice of, say, a really great subject line or, you know, an introduction to the pets or this sort of visualization aspect, they're going to go and look at your profile. So one way to really stand out uh, and have no idea what the statistics are, but let me just say that there is a hell of a lot of people who have house-sitting profiles without video. Now, if you're really wanting to step it up and start getting some assignments quickly, then have a video introduction because it, it, you know, it, for those who don't like to read, don't want to sit there and read through a massive big resume, they're just going to literally connect automatically. How's your energy? Can I see who you are? And then by the time they do get onto Skype to interview you, it's like, oh, wow, you're just like you are in your video. It's like, well, yeah, <laughs> this is me. <laughs> So like the one thing that I'm getting big from you ladies is it's very personal. If you're going to be staying in someone else's house with their pets maybe, people want to know who you are. They want to know maybe past jobs. They want to see you personally. They want to speak with you on Skype. So the big takeaway that I'm getting from this is it's very personal. Absolutely. House sitting is very personal. I mean you, you think it's the ultimate trust to put somebody that you don't know into your house and to look after – your most important possessions, not only your pets, but your house and everything in it. So it needs to be personal. Uh, you need to be putting across as a house sitter that element of trust straight up in your profile. People need to know that they can trust you. And I think as Jodie was saying, that video is just such a key point because if people can connect with you and read your energy, they can feel whether they can trust you or not. And video captures that. And they're trusting their own intuition there as well. And just to go back to a little bit when you were saying about what's the sort of philosophy behind House Sitting World um, right. and, and our movement or our community here, you know, we've been students of consciousness for many years now. And what we love the most, like even to the point of getting goosebumps thinking about this now, is we love that element of, of people opening up to trust to connection uh, and to new relationships. It's, it's intercultural, it's global, it's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's the most amazing experience of our lives. Yeah, we've, we've really become good friends with just about all our homeowners we keep in contact with. And why wouldn't you, I suppose, you, you have that element of connections, like you've been through an experience together. And so you keep that connection. And it's been great. We've, we've had some huge, you know, some great experiences with our homeowners. 
what do you ladies think are some of the biggest misconceptions about house sitting? Well, we were speaking to um, a number of U.S. expats uh, while we were in Costa Rica, and they were talking about, I guess, using the United States as one example. I mean, there's many right. examples around the world, but the United States is a country that is definitely driven by fear. And the whole concept of like, oh, you'd be mad to have a stranger come into your home, sort of that that concept is is really, really huge. Whereas when somebody leaves their country or they, they are well-traveled or, or worldly as such, and they're meeting new people from around the world all the time, they don't have that that, I don't know, I guess really forefront element of fear. So, yeah, it's it's sort of, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I, I guess you're trying to just say that people that are well-traveled are more open, I suppose. They see, they have more tolerance right. and, and are open-minded. And I guess that probably is a really big element. It's probably why a lot of expats actually offer their houses for, for house-sitting rather than domestic people. So everybody that we've house sat for has been an expat of some description. And it, again, it's one of the reasons why House Sitting World magazine is actually now existing uh, to get out there and educate more people on this concept. It's not just about travellers travelling the world and you know getting free accommodation. It is most definitely about you know, bringing a, a new level of awareness and consciousness to a homeowner to say, well, what if I was to have you know, somebody from another part of the world come and stay in my home. It, it's a little bit like the the general small town person. If a stranger comes to town, they're actually quite happy to show them around. It's that sort of mindset and mentality that we really want to keep bringing to people's awareness to overcome this idea of fear that you're going to have some stranger in your home and your possessions are going to be at risk. It's like, you know, if you if you believe that, you will create that. If you open yourself up and go, well, let me just try this. Let me bring some house sitters in. And perhaps the best way we can suggest for a homeowner that is a little bit sceptical about taking on house sitters, go and do a house sit yourself. Mm. We've had quite a few of our homeowners, as we've been sitting for them, they've gone off to another country or another part of the world to house sit for somebody else. It is, it's that direct experience that is invaluable. So I would love to wrap up our call with a bow tie or action steps if we can. What are some final tips or strategies you might want to recommend for listeners? I think two that we had that we actually haven't spoken about, I just want to quickly mention because I yeah, thought please. it was really important, is if a lot of homeowners have got um, holiday homes around the world and they sit empty and there's heaps of them in Costa Rica that we know of. There's and tons. They, and, they start, <laughs> and they start going to rack and ruin. That's the thing. And unless you're putting somebody in there to actually look after it, and that could be a housekeeper, of course, but if you really wanted to put house sitters in there, they would quite gratefully go into some of these holiday homes and look after them. So there's not necessarily any pets, obviously, to look after, but just to, for the upkeep of the holiday home is actually a really clever idea. Right. We've got a little bit of a twist on that as well. It seems like we're always talking about Costa Rica here, but uh, we've had two great experiences there. And uh, the homeowner um, that we were house-sitting for invited us to the neighbor's birthday party. So off we go and we're meeting them. And they're saying, oh, wow, like every time we, we leave the States to come down here to visit our holiday home, we have to put our, our dogs into, well, one flies with them, the other one gets put into pet-sitting and daycare. Uh, and it's really expensive. And we said, well, we're happy to come and look after them in upstate New York for you any time. And that's what we're doing next month. We're actually, we're going to their home in upstate New York while they go down to Costa Rica and have their month holiday. The other side of what Nat was talking about, of not just having your holiday house or your, your vacation home vacant all the time, is maybe even just putting somebody in there or, or you know, trusting a house sitter to come in and take care of the place for a couple of weeks or a month before you get there so that when you're on your vacation time, you're not having to clean the whole time because <laughs> if mm. you've had something left for six months, you usually have to do a lot of work around the garden and, and the home. So generally house sitters are more than happy to come in and, and do that kind of like, you know, have that lived in feeling and get the garden prepared, etc. And I think there's some really cool concepts to be passing on to, to property investors around the world and holiday home, vacation home owners, domestic expats. It, it's a huge, huge growth trend in travel and connection. 
The, the other one I just wanted to mention too was if you're considering moving overseas at all, house sitting is an awesome way to go and check out a country, to actually get a house set in that city that you wanted to go to and actually live like a local for a while, speak to the neighbours and get to know what the services are like, what's the internet like and, you know, the electricity. Electricity goes off all over the different countries. <laughs> They're always on and off, so it's not always reliable. But those are the sorts of things you can check out when you actually go house sitting because you're actually not just sitting in a hotel, you're actually being part of the local community and getting to know people. So that's another really awesome way and a lot of people are starting to do that as well when they're considering moving overseas is to use house sitting first. So just to wrap up the the tips I guess you were asking for is um, we would say definitely go and just search on on the internet any house sitting platform, whether it be international or, or domestic, kick off your imagination. Start working on your profile. We actually have a profile course that is due out very soon. We have this, a free guide that starts you on that path, but we have a full description of, of how to build every aspect the best way possible to have your profile really kick ass, as we call it. <laughs> And consider getting some references straight away. A lot of people will say, oh, I've never house it. It's like if you actually think about it, at some stage of your life, no doubt, you have either looked after you know, your brother or sister's cat or dog or you've stayed in your parents' house while they've had to go away. Start getting some references, both, both for your work life, uh, who you are as a person, and if you have had any of those house-sitting jobs for friends or family before. And... Big, big, big key thing is, you know, really think about get over yourself if you're if you're worried about doing video. Get over yourself if you want to do this. Do a video. It is the key element. Yeah. Nat and Jody, you ladies have been an absolute pleasure. What are the best ways to follow or connect with you? Our main way really is our Facebook group. If you go to Facebook and look up House Sitting World, now you'll need to look under groups and not the page because we do actually have a page called um, House Sitting World as well. But if you look under groups for House Sitting World, you'll see a very growing and active community forming there at the moment. So that's the best way. And we've got a free guide as well. So the three steps to getting started on house sitting, which is on internationalhousesitting.com. And I bet, I bet by the time this uh, everyone's listening to this, our magazine mm. is going to be on all mobile devices. So we're starting with uh, the Apple iPad and iPhone, and very shortly after, we'll be on uh, the Amazon Kindle, Nook, and Android devices as well. So that's really exciting because the best part about the magazine is when we first started in house sitting, we didn't know we were going to be doing this full time. Uh, But as we started researching more ways of how to get from country to country or even just coming across other people's blogs and information, it was like, wow, there's a lot out here. And you can spend a lot of time reading other people's stuff and searching the net for it. So we just wanted to be able to make this one-stop shop, bringing the best of everybody's work into one place. And that's what House Sitting World magazine is about. You ladies are awesome. Very dialed in. I wanted to thank you once again for coming on, and I hope we can do it again sometime very soon. Love to. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks it's been so great. much, Taylor. It's been fun. <laughs> I absolutely love the call with Nat and Jody today, and will surely be one of our most talked about and listened to podcast episodes Ever. You can head on over to our site for complete show notes, easy ways to connect with Nat and Jody, and more information about their fantastic website, House Sitting World. And don't forget, if you're looking for great ways to stay at amazing homes in the world's most spectacular locations, but don't want to spend a fortune, I encourage you to check out Trusted House Sitters. With hundreds of house sitting assignments just a click away, you could only be minutes from lining up your next overseas assignment. Head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash trusted for more details. You have been listening to the IREL Podcast with Taylor White. Be sure to hit up irelpodcast.com for more. That's irelpodcast.com. Thanks for listening.